In this demonstration, I'm going to show you a handful of markers. Uh, the only kind I don't have myself is the brush tip kind of marker that acts like a real paintbrush. But what I do have um, is a handful of fine and ultrafine and chisel point type markers. Uh, you'll notice we talk an awful lot about Sharpie markers. Um, sometimes people use that word like we use the name Kleenex. It's a brand name, but it's applied to a Sharpie can be sometimes just describe um, any marker that is permanent. So this particular Sharpie is a twin point one or dual point. It has two different types of tips. One of them is the ultrafine, which also comes in just a pen format. And it makes lines and marks like this. It's great for doing hatching and outlining kind of work. You make very fine lines with it. This marker also has the fine point to it. And I can use the tip of this marker, but I can also use it for doing some shading. So take advantage of not just the point of the markers, but also the edges when they have edges. Here's another version of just, this one's just a plain old fine point marker. Um, when I hold it up to the lens, you can see that it's not as sharp as the other one. This one is a much older one. It's been used more often, so it's worn down a little bit. It also makes nice marks, but you can you might be able to tell they're a little bit fuzzier than the brand new marker that has a nice fine uh, point to it still. And when I mark with this one, because it's older, it's not filling in the black as much as the newer one is because the ink is starting to run out. But you hang on to markers until they're completely dry because sometimes you want to have an effect like this where it's a bit lighter and um, shows more of the base paper coming through than the new marker which does it has a lot more coverage. Another marker style that I'm going to show you has a chisel point. The word that keeps popping into my mouth when I don't mean to use it. So when I open this one up, you can see it has a very angular cut to it. And it's also quite wide. And when you, oh, I guess it's hard to see from the end, but from the end, oh, it's about two millimeters wide. Uh, this kind of marker is terrific for making large wide marks when you use the point on its, you know, angled slightly like that. Um, I can also use it vertically to make narrower lines that look an awful lot like the fine Sharpie marker point. And I can also, as I'm drawing, vary how I'm laying it down. So I can make a curve that goes from, or a shape, a mark that goes from a wide point to a fine point. Wide point to fine point, and then back again. So this one is quite flexible in the kind of mark making it does. It's just not very good at doing this ultra fine marks like this one over here. And again, when they start to wear down, they don't give you as nice a sharp line as the new ones do. Um, last but not least, I have here a Pantone brand marker and uh, it has a different kind of point completely. It's more like the fine point Sharpie marker. And when I draw with this one, if I hold it vertically, I get a very fine point to it, fine mark rather. But because of the style of nib that this has, I can also use it sideways and use it for shading. So a lot of these markers are quite flexible and you can do more than one thing with it. The most limited one is the first one I showed you with the ultra fine point tip, because with this one, the very end of the nib is so tiny that you can't do shading with it. It, you're, it doesn't really change its style of mark making. So I would recommend that you go and buy a handful of different styles of Sharpie markers if you don't already own some. And play around with them and see what you can do with them. You'll be using them in the graphic translation project 